By now, you guys know the whole deal with Streamlabs. I'm not here to rehash all of the drama. I think I've said everything that I've wanted to say on that whole situation. I just want to deal with the reality. And the reality is, I know a lot of you guys want to transition over from Streamlabs to something else. So I want to make that process easier for you guys. So here's how this video is going to work. I'm going to list as many Streamlabs features as I can. And then I'm going to give you my favorite alternatives for those features, which ones might work the best for you and how they're different to the Streamlabs version. Now, ironically, some of the software I'm going to talk about happens to be the original software that Streamlabs copied, but uh, we're not going to talk about that. Hopefully by the end of this video, you'll have enough info to migrate your entire setup off of Streamlabs. And trust me, you're going to be very happy that you did it. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes to help expand your skill set and help you become a better content creator. And as a content creator, you'll know that you normally have to juggle like 10 to 20 different tasks at a time. And I procrastinate a lot. Why do you think I'm up at like two in the morning? Skillshare has a ton of classes covering various topics, but they have a section on productivity. So I found a video by Ali I don't know how to pronounce your last name, but you're looking good, homie. He did a class on managing your side hustle and he's a YouTuber. So he goes through a bunch of different techniques on how he stays productive. And you get to see how he sets up templates and checklists for all his videos. It's dope. Plus he has a British accent. So you know he's smart. My name is Ali. I'm a doctor. None of the videos have any ads. So if you'd like to join, click in the link down below and the first 1000 of you will get a one month free trial. And then after that, it's just super fun, happy times. Ooh, ooh lol. Let's start with the obvious. Streamlabs OBS, the main software that you use for streaming. Guys, don't waste your time, just use OBS Studio. It's the original software that Slobs is based off, so it's gonna be the most similar to what you're already used to. It's got way less bloat, there's a nice guidance setup if you just have no idea what you're doing, and there's always new plugins and extra features being added by the community. But well, Nutty, I'm too lazy. I'm too lazy to move stuff over. Listen, I don't like your attitude, Steve, because you can just import all your slob settings into OBS. They have an import feature. You just go into scene collection, click on import, and then navigate to this folder, and all your scene collections are here. All your graphics, your alerts, your widgets, your cameras, your window captures, everything will be transferred over. Now, if you're new to OBS Studio, there's one key difference that you need to be aware of. In slobs, you could just right click and add a donation goal or an alert box or a widget. And that's not really something you can do in OBS Studio. That was something specific to slobs. So when you import all of your scene collections, all the different Streamlabs widgets, those are gonna be converted into browser sources. So if for some reason you do wanna stick to using Streamlabs for your alerts, then you've totally misunderstood the point of this video. What are you even doing here? This video is about getting off Streamlabs, so we're going to need to find a new platform for our alerts. Speaking of which, for that, I'm going to be recommending Stream Elements. With everybody jumping shrimp, shrimp, ship, with everybody jumping ship from Streamlabs, you've probably heard a lot about Stream Elements, and for good reason. It's really the best drop in replacement for Streamlabs, and most of the important features that you're going to want to have for your stream are covered by stream elements. You got follow alerts, chat windows, widgets, labels for your latest sub, all the things that you can expect, they basically have it. They even made a Chrome extension so you can import all your different Streamlabs alerts into stream elements. I'll leave that link down below. There's a bunch of other cool resources down there too. Now there's a key difference between Streamlabs and stream elements. Normally in Streamlabs, you'd add all your different widgets as separate browser sources inside of OBS. But with Stream Elements, it's a little bit different. They have an overlay editor, which you can access by logging into the Stream Elements website. And this is where you add all your different widgets and your alerts. Stream Elements outputs the entire thing as a single URL. So you just copy this URL and then you go into OBS Studio and add one browser source and paste that URL. So all your different alerts and all your different widgets are maintained inside of this single browser source. A lot of people seem to like this system. Frankly, I think there's positives and negatives to it, but but I'm not gonna get into it right now. The point is, this is just information that you should know. Most of the alternatives going forward are going to be Stream Elements products, and they're a great company. I've worked with them before. Plus, they're not gonna try slam Stream Elements Prime down your throats. And like, I'm, I don't even know if Stream Elements Prime is a thing, so that should tell you something right there. While we're talking about Stream Elements, I know I'm gonna get a ton of questions about, well, what about OBS Live Streamer? What about OBS Live? Can we just tone it down, okay? Inside voices, please. I'm gonna say something that might surprise some of you guys, but I actually don't recommend it. First of all, I really hate the name OBS Live because even though on their website, they repeatedly refer to it as a plugin, everybody seems to think that OBS Live is an entirely separate version of OBS Studio. 
it's not. It's literally just OBS Studio. In fact, check this out. Inside of OBS Studio, go to your docs and add this URL. Boom. You just turned OBS Studio into OBS Live. I'm not joking. That's the only difference between OBS Live and OBS Studio. I mean, that's not exactly true. There's a couple other features that frankly, I don't think are that important. But for the most part, the only difference is this one dock, which you can just add to OBS Studio anyway. Now, the reason I don't recommend OBS Live to begin with is if you're like me and you have OBS installed in portable mode and you install OBS Live, you actually can't uninstall it. It just errors out. It's really weird. It's worth noting that Stream Elements has announced that they're going to give a new name to OBS Live. So by the time you watch this video, it might not be called OBS Live anymore. Okay, so what about CloudBot? Everybody has a chatbot in their stream. They're really useful for adding commands, timed messages, changing your stream title, timing people out if they ask you if you're a girl. Again, Stream Elements has their own chatbot. You just log into Stream Elements and go into the chatbot section and they have a list of all the default commands. So they have things for changing your title, changing your category. They have a magic eight ball, which is interesting, but you can make your own custom commands. So if you want to have something, so when someone in chat types an exclamation mark discord, it types out your discord link. You can set that up there. They've also got a loyalty point system and a quote system. So all the main things that you have in CloudBot, they're all there too. But if you want something more advanced, and I'm talking like way more advanced, I totally recommend using StreamerBot. I've been talking a lot about this program for like the past two months. It's in my mind, the best chatbot that there is. It's not for everybody, but if you're a power user like me, you're going to love this thing, I promise you. You can do voice commands. You can set up a command so that your mods can change your scene for you from Twitch chat. And you can even do custom code so basically everything that cloudbot can do can be done inside of streamerbot if you know what you're doing granted this is a bit more of an advanced program if you're like a beginner streamer this might be a little bit overwhelming for you but i do predict in the next six months you're going to be hearing a lot about streamerbot so Keep, keep your keep your eyes peeled for that. I don't know why I pointed to my ear, but you, you know what I mean. Streamlabs Deck. This one is an obvious one. It's basically the Streamlabs version of a Stream Deck. If you want a good alternative, just install the Stream Deck app from Elgato. It's the exact same thing as a regular Stream Deck, except on your phone. You are gonna have to pay a monthly subscription, which I know is not for everybody, but I love my Stream Deck. I own a bunch of them, and I just couldn't imagine streaming without them. What I think the Stream Deck app is perfect for is for the people that are absolutely sure that they're eventually going to get a physical stream deck because you can just use the stream deck app for a couple months save up some money and maybe show your feed on stream a few times to rack up those tier three subs and then when you're ready for it you can get a physical stream deck and transfer all your settings from your phone to the real stream deck it's completely seamless but having said that i know some of you guys absolutely refuse to spend money which you know i can respect so if you don't want to use the stream deck app you can also use touch portal for your phone it's not quite quite as easy to use, but they do have a free version and you can still control your stream from your phone with it. And there's also Deckboard, which has a free version and the paid version is also quite a bit cheaper than Touch Portal. Plus, I also think that Deckboard is a lot more polished than Touch Portal, but it's a little bit dated. It doesn't have nearly the same amount of features. Either way, the Streamlabs Deck app isn't even good to begin with. Plus, if you're moving over from OBS Studio, you can't even use it at all. So just stop using it. Selective recording. This is admittedly one of the better features of slobs. This is a feature that allows you to stream with all your overlays, with your widgets and your alerts, while at the same time recording your gameplay footage completely clean with none of your overlays. A lot of people use this feature so they can edit their live stream later and then upload that to YouTube. And there isn't really a feature like this in OBS Studio. However, if you install a plugin called Source Record, which we talked about in this video, you can add a filter to whatever source that you want and record just that source independently of whatever it is that you're streaming. So if you want to record your camera on its own at full resolution, you can just add a source record filter to your camera. I have heard from some people that this plugin can be a little bit buggy. So another alternative is just to launch two instances of OBS and then record them separately, which by the way, yes, it is possible to launch two instances of OBS. This method has its own problems as well, but I also did a full tutorial showing you guys how to set this up which by the way, nobody watched that video, which made me super sad because I put so much freaking effort into it. Merch. This is something that Streamlabs has had for a while. You can put your own logo on a shirt, a hoodie, a mug, 
And then when someone buys your merch, you can have a cool alert pop up on your stream. Again, Stream Elements is the way to go here. They have their own merch store functionality. It's called SE Merch. And it works basically the same as the Streamlabs merch. And by basically, I mean, it's literally exactly the same. And I know that because they copied the landing page from Stream Elements. Now granted, Streamlabs does have quite a bit more variety when it comes to the different items that you can add to your merch store, but SE Merch is continuously adding more new items. Plus they just rolled out a new feature that integrates with your Twitch account. So anyone that's subbed to you on Twitch can get a discount on any items that they buy. If you do want more variety, you can use stores like Redbubble or Teespring. I haven't used Teespring myself, but I have used Redbubble. It's actually where I got this shirt right here. And uh, they're pretty nice too. You're just not gonna get the same Twitch integration that you're gonna get with SE Merch. So you're not gonna get any alerts on your stream and there's gonna be no sub discounts. Multi-streaming. I don't know why I keep slapping the table, but this is a feature in Slobs that allows you to stream to multiple platforms at the same time. So you can simultaneously stream to Twitch, YouTube, and Facebook. There's been a debate as to whether or not this is actually a good idea. That's a topic for another video. The point is, Slobs can do this and OBS Studio can't. So, you know, what are we gonna do? We're we gonna give up? Are you serious? Do you even know who I am? I'm going to be recommending a service called Restream.io. It's a service that takes your stream and just mirrors it to all the different platforms, up to 30 different platforms at the same time. But the beauty of Restream over the multi-stream feature of Streamlabs is that Restream does all of the mirroring for you. You don't need to have faster internet or a more powerful PC to re-encode your stream multiple times. You just stream to the Restream servers and they pump out your stream to all the different platforms that you want. We'll talk more about Restream next week. I'm gonna do a whole dedicated video about their service as well as whether or not I think it's even a good idea to Restream to begin with. But if you do wanna do multi-streaming, then Restream is the way to go. All right, so the last one is CrossClip. This is something that was announced by Streamlabs back in July. And it's a service that takes your Twitch clips and allows you to quickly edit them into TikTok videos and then upload them directly to TikTok. It's a really neat concept. Only another company made a program a year earlier called Combo. It works pretty much the same. You log in with your Twitch account and then it automatically pulls together all of the clips that were made in your last stream. You can set up your own layout. You can cut out a shape for your camera. You can even do all the editing on your phone, although the desktop version does give you a lot more options. When you're done, you can create the clip and then it will email you when your clip is done exporting and then you can just directly upload it to TikTok. I would like to see support for YouTube Shorts because because I'm not quite sure whether it supports it or not. Of course, you could go with a traditional video editor like DaVinci Resolve, which is what I use to edit all my videos. But Combo is really simple, super fast, and you can create your own templates if you make a lot of TikTok videos. It's really slick. Anyway, that's been it. Guys, I know there's probably more Streamlabs features that I might not have talked about in this video. So if there is a feature that you just simply can't live without, leave a comment down below. Let me know what it is and we'll help you find an alternative. You can also join the Discord if you wanna ask for help for moving your Streamlabs settings over to OBS, or if you find anything cool that can replace a feature in Streamlabs, let us know there too. And finally, come follow me on Twitch because that's the real reason I make these videos. We do a live show three times a week where I literally just answer questions for four hours straight. So I'll see you guys there. Hashtag uninstall Streamlabs. Let's get that trending. I'll see you guys next week.